Danger, Dr. Danfield. Danfield, my wife was murdered. And there's the man who did it. Oh, don't believe him, doctor. I didn't do it. Then who killed her? He did. He arranged it purposely to put the blame on me. The gun in my hand, the witnesses. He planned it that way from the beginning. Dr. Daniel Danfield, student of crime psychology, has many times provided police with a solution to a baffling case. And at times, too, the alert Dr. Danfield has found that his pet theories on the workings of the criminal mind must be subject to change without notice. There's an interesting case ahead for the young doctor today. Let's see how he handles it. At the moment, we find Dr. Danfield in his study dictating to that precocious secretary, Rusty Fairfax. Uh, the problem of an increasing crime rate cannot be solved by so-called improved methods of apprehending the criminal. They must seek first to check the causes of crime, to detect the crime before it's committed. Now, how's that sound? Do you want my honest opinion, Doctor? Well, certainly. I think it's pretty stuffy. Stuffy? It's the truth. You ask for my opinion. In other words, Miss Fairfax, you think this is going to be a dull speech. Mm -hmm. You think my audience is going to be bored. I don't think they'll be bored. Before that happens, they'll all be asleep. Great. You know, Rusty, sometimes I wonder if there's anything under that lovely red hair of yours except skull. Oh, there have been times when you mentioned certain points of interest. Please don't change the subject. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to make plain that the crime problem is anything but a dull topic. Have you any idea how many crimes are committed in this country every day? Well, I saw a movie last night that was one. Rusty, my little angel face. In the United States of America, a crime of violence is committed on the average of once every eight minutes. No. Yes. And a good percentage of them right here in this city. Oh, it's impossible, Dan. Well, I have a lot of fancy figures from eminent authorities to prove it. That's what's wrong, Rusty. People won't believe these things are happening all around them. They have to be made to understand, to realize Oh, how can you make them realize? Look out the window. The sun going down over the city. You couldn't make anyone believe in that beautiful scene. There's crime. Ah, but there is, Rusty. How do we know what's going on behind those thousands of windows? Anything can be happening. Absolutely anything. Just a moment. Who is it? Who's there? Who is it? Oh, it's you. Why didn't... Oh. Why do you have that gun? What are you going to do? Oh, put it down. Don't shoot! Don't! Don't! Good morning, Rusty. Did you get my speech typed out? It's all here, Dan. Twenty pages. <laughs> this isn't a speech. It's a filibuster. Well, I thought it sounded rather good when I dictated it last night. Well, the fact that I stayed here until midnight taking it down is an indication of something. Uh, an indication that you like your job, perhaps? Oh, or my employer. Oh. <laughs> and uh, so early in the morning, too. <laughs> Possibly a characteristic of red-haired women. Oh, you and your psychology. Uh, Rusty, will you see who's at the door? Yes, master. Good morning, Captain Otis. Ah, oh, good morning, Rusty. Well, Captain, glad to see you. Hello, Dan. Am I interrupting? No, no, not at all. Always happy to see my favorite minion of the law. Tell me, what's new at headquarters? Ah, I see you have the morning paper. Did you read about the Eve Sheldon murder? Yes, and also that the boys have the killer behind bars. Yeah, it's quick work. Something of a surprise, though. Neil Morton being tagged for murder. Because of the rich family and all that? Sure. Only son of a millionaire, no criminal record. You're uh, positive he killed her? Well, I was. Oh, what do you mean? It's a peculiar case, Dan. I find myself in the embarrassing position of having arrested a man for a murder I don't think he committed. But, Captain, the newspaper said you found Morton standing over the woman's body with the gun in his hand. Mm, Looks like pretty conclusive evidence, Captain. True, very true, my boy. The trouble is it seems a little too conclusive, if you get what I mean. You think Morton was framed? That's what I think, but I have no proof. Here's the story. I know it well because I happened to be in on it from the beginning. Last night about 6.30, Roy Sheldon, Eve Sheldon's husband, came to my office. He was upset. Very worried. You've got to help me, Captain Otis. I'm, I'm going out of my mind. The police will do what they can, Sheldon. But we can't go out to this Neil Morton and arrest him simply because you think he's fallen in love with your wife. Well, you could if I prove he's trying to break up our home and take my wife away from me. There, there's a law against that, isn't there? Can you prove it? Yes, listen. Neil Morton and I both went with Eve when we were in college. It was... Plenty of competition, but she finally married me, even though Neil had all that money. Uh, go on. I, I told Eve I'd give her everything that Neil could give her after we were married. Well, it, it didn't work out that way. 
I had a lot of bad luck. So Eve decided she'd made a bad choice, huh? Yes, and Neil helped her. He kept dragging us down to that estate, showing off his cars and stables, his servants, rubbing it in. I appreciate your problem, Sheldon, but I still see nothing to justify a criminal charge against Neil Morton. But you will. Tonight, in half an hour, Neil is coming to our apartment to get Eve's decision. Decision? Yes. Two days ago, I overheard them talking. Neil was trying to sell Evie the idea of divorcing me and marrying him. Apparently, he'd been trying to talk her into it for weeks. She promised to give him her answer tonight. Well, what do you want me to do? Wait. Tonight, I'm supposed to be at a lodge meeting. Neil is coming at 8 o'clock. Oh, but Mr. I'm Sheldon... not asking you to snoop. Just come with me. We'll, we'll wait outside. I won't even ask you to go in. Unless there's a good reason. I still don't think this is a job for the police, Sheldon. But if you wish, I'll go with you. In a moment, we'll return for the second act of Danger, Dr. Danfield. But first... Now back to Michael Dunn for the second act of Danger, Dr. Danfield. Well, that's an interesting story so far, Captain. How did it end? Just the way you read it in the newspapers. Sheldon and I went to the apartment and waited out. Let's wait here in this doorway, Captain. He'll be here soon. It's almost eight. You know, Sheldon, this is a job for a private detective, not the police. You may not think so later. What was that? Well, there's no telling what Morton may do if he turns him down. Stand back. Here he comes. Now, come with me. Aren't you rushing things? We've got to follow him in. But it seems to me you ought to give no, the man no, a no, chance. No, no, no. He won't beat around the bush. He'll have her answer ready when he steps in the door. Let's go. This is our apartment. Go on in, Sheldon. If you run into trouble, you can call me. Don't leave. Don't worry, I won't. <gasps> Eve! Roy, I, I found her. She's dead. Eve. Eve! Morton, you killed her! Paul, I didn't! I didn't! I was just... Sheldon, he what? killed her! He killed my wife! There's a gun in his hand! Boy, Morton, I'm going! Hey, there, Sheldon, I'll handle this. So you see, Dan, I... Had to arrest Neil Morton and charge him with the shooting of Eve Sheldon. I see what you mean, Captain. I also see a couple of other things. What, Dan? Well, I can see, Rusty, what Captain Otis meant when he said the whole setup was too pat. Well, what's pat about it? It seems to me that Captain Otis caught Neil Morton red-handed. What was Morton's story, Captain? Well, he told rather a fantastic tale about Sheldon coming to see him about 7 o'clock last night. Mm. And Sheldon told Morton that Eve was sick and wanted to see him. Morton have any witnesses to that? Well, no. Tell me, how about the shot? Did anyone hear it? No, it looks to me like Morton's a dead duck. Not yet he isn't, Captain. Now, as I understand it, there was only one set of fingerprints on the gun. Yes, Morton's. That's one of the problems. Yeah, doesn't it strike you as rather strange? Morton must have had the gun in his pocket when he entered the room. Now, even though his sole purpose in being there was to murder Eve Sheldon, he would have had to handle the gun several times. Yeah, so Morton's fingerprints should have been all over it. Right. Prince would have been made when he put it in his pocket at home, when he took it out of his pocket, and when he held it in firing position. Mm. And the fact that there was only one set of prints would indicate that the gun had been wiped clean before Morton touched mm -hmm, it. Exactly. Looks to me as though Morton came into the room, found Eve dead on the floor with a gun beside her, and instinctively picked it up, at which yeah. point Sheldon arrived and began yelling bloody murder. Well, it's still only a theory, Dan. It doesn't prove that Neil Morton didn't kill Eve Sheldon, and it doesn't prove that anyone else did. I can't see that we're any better off. Oh, but we are, Rusty. We're reasonably certain that it wasn't Neil Morton who killed Eve. Now, the next thing to do is to have a talk with Roy Sheldon. Let's go, Captain. <laughs> This is the apartment house, Dan. Well, not exactly a ritzy place, is yeah, it? Sheldon claims he couldn't afford anything better. It's uh, halfway down the hall. Well, if he promised his wife luxury, he certainly missed the boat. <laughs> yeah. Well, here we are. Oh. Yes? Oh, Captain Otis. Hello, Sheldon. This is Dr. Danfield, the crime psychologist. Crime psychologist? May we come in? No, I... Couldn't you come back some other time after all? Sorry, I... Sheldon, this can't wait. 
Captain, the least you can do is respect a man's grief. We do respect your grief, Sheldon, but we also respect the possibility of a miscarriage of justice. Oh, uh, where was the body lying, Captain? Oh, uh, over there by the window. I resent this. Oh, sorry, Sheldon. We're just making sure that it was Neil Morton who murdered your wife. Making sure? You saw him do it. The only thing I saw was Morton standing over the body with a gun in his hand. Sure, and his fingerprints were on the gun. The bullet came from the gun. Shut up. Now, Dan, I, uh... Roy, darling. Vina, I told you... Oh. Now, skip it. This is Vina Rosalind. She's a friend of mine. Oh, a friend, eh? Do all your friends call you Roy, darling? Roy, who are these men? I'm Dr. Danfield, Miss Rosalind. This is Captain Otis of the police department. Oh. We're here to ask Mr. Sheldon a few questions regarding his wife's death. Ask him questions? But Neil Morton killed her. I saw him go into the apartment. Oh, did you, Miss Rosalind? Sure I did. I was just going into my room when he came along the hall and knocked on Roy's door. Where is your apartment, Miss Rosalind? Uh, across the hall, two doors down. Did you see Morton enter this apartment? No, I, I didn't actually see him go in. I couldn't just stand there and stare at him. Of course not. What did you do? What difference does it make? Don't answer him, Vina. Keep quiet, Sheldon. This is important. Go ahead, Dan. Actually, Miss Rosalind, you're not sure that Morton entered this apartment. Oh, yes, I am. <laughs> After I entered my own apartment, I, uh, I stood near the door, listening. Oh? What did you hear? I heard the door open, Morton go inside, and the door close. Tell me, how long was it after that that Sheldon and Captain Otis arrived? About two minutes. Well, that's close, Dan. Sheldon and I weren't more than a couple of minutes behind Morton. So that settles that. I was with Captain Otis all the time. Not so oh, fast, oh. Sheldon. Miss Rosalind... Were you standing at the door listening between the time Morton entered this apartment and when Captain Otis and Sheldon arrived? Yes. How long would you say it was after Neil Morton entered the apartment before you heard the, uh, shot? The shot? Why, I... I... There was a shot, wasn't there? Oh, well, I suppose... You're crazy. Of course there was a shot. There had to be. Tell him how long it was before you heard it, Vina. Well, I, I, don't, I don't know... I mean, it couldn't have been very Are long. Are you telling I... me that you know exactly how much time passed before Sheldon and the captain arrived, but you can't say when you heard the shot? Why don't you leave her alone? I can you expect her to think firing questions at her that way? The answer to that is simple. Miss Rosalind is confused only because she didn't hear the shot. There wasn't any shot. Wasn't any? There had to be. That's right, Sheldon. There had to be. Well, there's a bullet hole. There must be a shot. But when the shot was fired is a different thing. Now, well, sorry to disappoint you, Mr. Sheldon. But I think that if Neil Morton came here last night with murder on his mind, he was a little too late. In a moment, we'll return for the third act of Danger, Dr. Danfield. But first... Now back to Michael Dunn for the third act of Danger, Dr. Danfield. Dr. Danfield's office. Hello, Rusty. This is Dan. Dan, where are you? I'm in a drugstore near Morton's place. Now, I want you to call the Sheldon's apartment, explain who you are, and tell him to pick up Vina Rosalind and come out to Morton's home at once. Where's Captain Otis? He's going down to headquarters to engineer Morton's release. To engineer Morton's release? Well, then he isn't guilty. After you make the call, Rusty, grab a taxi and come down to Morton's yourself. Oh, by the way, bring your notebook, will you? But, Dan, I suppose Sheldon refuses to come. I don't think he'll refuse, Rusty. That's all. Goodbye. Yeah. All right, I get it. Yeah. Who was it, Roy? Danfield's secretary. Hmm. He says Danfield wants us both to meet him at Morton's house in an hour. Why? I don't know. Roy, are we going? Sure, we're going. But, uh, what if they've found out something? Don't worry, they haven't. There isn't a chance. I wish I were sure. Come on, honey, quit worrying. Just leave everything to me. <laughs> Kiss me, Roy. That make things better. <laughs> Only it could always be in like this. It will be. No one's ever going to know. Unless. Unless what, Roy? 
Lena, what'd you do with the gun? Gun? What gun? After you shot Eve. After I... Roy! Okay, you don't have to tell me. It's probably better that I didn't know. Roy, you're not trying to say that I... Oh, no, you can't be that rotten. What do you mean, that rotten? What are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about, saying that I shot Eve. Oh, stop putting on a knack. We're together in this thing. We were together. But if you think you can put the blame on me, why, you cheap double crossing Are you accusing me of murdering Eve? You bet I am. You did it, and I'm just the girl who can prove it. You little... Skip the act, Roy. I'm Vina, remember? The only witness you've got. Shut up! Oh! Okay, Roy, if that's the way you want it. <laughs> Come on. Let's go over to Morton. It looks like Danfield is going to hang out the wash. And I want to be there when you go through the ringer. Well, Mr. Morton, I've looked forward to meeting you. I hope you don't mind if I ask you a few questions. What if I say I do? <laughs> oh, really, Danfield, this is ridiculous. Oh? First I'm framed for a murder I didn't commit, then I'm told I'm free. Then I'm held prisoner here in my own home. What's the idea? And what's Captain Otis prowling around the other rooms for? I hope to have the answer to your questions in just a... Oh, excuse me, will you? That must be my secretary. Oh, hello, Rusty. Come on in. Hello, Dan. I call Sheldon. He and Miss Rosalind will be over. Well, this is Neil Morton, Rusty. Mr. Morton, my secretary, Miss Fairfax. How do you do? How do you do? Is that about Sheldon coming here? I won't let that fellow in this house. And who's this Miss Rosalind? She's a friend of Sheldon's. She lives down the hall a couple of doors from his apartment. Oh, do you remember meeting a girl in the hall? Oh, I don't know. Oh, yes, yes, I believe there was a girl there at that. <laughs> Give me an odd look now that I think about it. Would you recognize her if you saw her again? I think I would. Mm -hmm. Oh, hello, Miss Fairfax. Hello, Captain. I didn't know you were here. Oh, I've been here for some time, picking up a few little interesting odds and ends. Any luck, Captain? Yes. I found what I was looking for, Dan. What about you? Not bad. As soon as Miss Rosalind and Sheldon get here, I think we'll be able to clear up this case without any trouble. Ah. The devil are you talking about? Certainly there's no question of who killed Eve Sheldon. I'm afraid there is, Morton. You see, there are several people involved in this affair. Oh, I see. You think perhaps this Miss Rosalind... Possibly. <laughs> oh, Doctor, pardon me for laughing, but you don't really expect Sheldon and Miss Rosalind to come here. Yes, don't you? Well, hardly. I'll gladly make a small wager that the two of them are over the hills and far away right now. Sheldon's a fool, but not that much of a fool. After all, someone's at the door, Neil. Will you show Mr. Sheldon and Miss Rosalind in? Still don't believe it. Dan, this idea of yours may work, and it may not. Well, what are you worried about, Captain? I think we both know who committed the murder. But I'll admit that I haven't found a logical motive. And without a motive, the evidence we have means nothing. Well, it appears to me you have more motives than anything else. Well, Captain Otis is right, Rusty. Let's bite our time. I'm going to try a psychological experiment. Watch for a surprise. Well, it's too bad you didn't make that little wager, Dr. Danfield. You'd have won. Hello, Miss Rosalind. Mr. Sheldon. Let's get this straight, Danfield, right at the start. You can't pin this murder on me. I have Captain Otis as a witness. I was with him at the time it happened. All right. Then you have nothing to worry about. Besides, would I have come here if I had anything to do with it? Well, perhaps you came to defend yourself, which means that Miss Rosalind is here for the same reason. I don't have to defend myself. I don't know anything about it. <laughs> Well, Dr. Danfield, you have the stage all set for the great final scene. Let's begin, huh? Gladly, Mr. Morton. Now, Miss Rosalind, I'm going to be very frank. We have good reason to believe you killed Eve Sheldon. So he told you. Well, I didn't. He killed her, and he's trying to put the blame on me. That's not true. She did it. Thought she could get away with it. Then when the police came into it, she got scared and tried to pass the buck. Why, you healed. Wait a moment. Sheldon. When did you decide that Miss Rosalind had killed Eve? I suspected she was going to do it for a long time. She, she'd been threatening, but I didn't think she'd go through with it. She thought with Eve out of the way that I'd marry her. You conceited... You can't prove that. Well, Morton, what have you to say? Oh, really, this whole argument is stupid. Why are these two shouting? I was the one who was framed. Simply because I fell for Sheldon's sob story, I was accused of murder and spent a night in jail. Well, the odd part of it is, Morton, you weren't framed. You only thought you were. Well, I don't get that. Well, you will in a minute. Sheldon, I'm asking Captain Otis to arrest you and Miss Rosalind and charge you with obstructing justice. Obstructing justice? What is this? You both claim you knew the other had murdered Eve, and yet you allowed Neil Morton to be arrested for the crime. What neither of you knew was that Neil Morton actually did shoot Eve Sheldon. Oh. Oh, 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 really, you're quite an amusing fellow, Danfield. Tell us more. All right, Morton. 
Captain, what was it you found in Morton's bedroom? A silencer. Here it is. You recognize it, Morton? Well, of course. It's mine. I've had it for years. So what? So you used this silencer on the gun with which you shot Eve Sheldon yesterday evening. That's very interesting. Unfortunately, it isn't true. Oh, isn't it? Morton, you'd been in love with Eve Sheldon for years. When she married, you were furious. Still, you thought it would be easy to win her back because you had money and Sheldon had nothing. Oh, Danfield, this is stupid. Oh, wait. Yesterday evening, about six o'clock, you went to Sheldon's apartment. You shot Eve using this silencer on the gun. Oh. You left the gun there, but removed the silencer and came home. And who's going to believe a story like that? Well, naturally, I have proof, Morton. When Sheldon came home, he found his wife dead. He thought Miss Rosalind had murdered her because she threatened to do so. That gave Sheldon an idea. He saw a chance to pin the murder on you, whom he hated, and let Miss Rosalind off free. Oh, you're still talking nonsense, Danfield. Would I walk into Sheldon's apartment if I already knew his wife was lying dead on the floor? Yes. You reason when Sheldon came and told you his wife was ill and asked you to go and see her that he hadn't discovered her body. If you refused to do as he asked, you'd be giving away yourself completely. Oh, and just how do you think you're going to prove all this? I'll show you. Miss Rosalind, when was the first time you saw Neil Morton? Why, I... I don't remember. Oh, yes, you do. You saw him enter the apartment for the first time last night about six o'clock, didn't you? Well... There was a man, but I didn't know... You didn't know it was Morton because it was the first time you'd seen him. Later on, you said you recognized him when he came back the second time. That's right, Dan. Miss Rosalind had to see Morton twice in order to recognize him the second time. Well, Dan Field, it's really quite a story. You made it up very ingeniously. Only one thing you've overlooked. I had no reason to kill Eve Sheldon. And as you crime people say, no motive. Now, certainly I wouldn't shoot a girl simply because I went with her in college. Uh, would I, Captain Otis? <laughs> well, one wouldn't think so. Then, uh, all right, Morton. Let's uh, let's say I've made a good try. Ah, I should have eliminated you as a suspect in the beginning. Well, I'm glad to hear you admit it. You haven't the courage to be a killer. Now you're getting personal, Danfield. I deal in criminal psychology, Morton. I marked you immediately as a moral weakling. Now, just a in moment. In college, you wanted to be a ladies' man, but no girl would have you because there's no manhood in now, you. look here, Danfield. All your life, you've been a pampered child, Morton. You've gotten what you want by throwing a tantrum. Why, I... You wanted Eve Sheldon, and you couldn't have her. She scorned you, ridiculed you, just as women have always done. Stop it! Dan, Stop he it. has a paper knife. I'll kill you, Danfield! Oh, I'll you kill you! Oh, Morton, Sheldon, help I'll me! I'll kill you! I'll kill you, Danfield, just like I killed Eve Sheldon. I'll kill you, too. You can't stop it! Stop you dirty rat! Stop it! Dirty! It's a morning. Ah, nice punch, Dan. He's out cold. Well, Captain, there's a successful illustration of applied psychology. <laughs> well, you can call it psychology, Dan, but it looked to me like a perfect left hook. <laughs> In a moment, we'll return for the conclusion of Danger, Dr. Danfield. But first... And now for the conclusion of... Danger, Dr. Danfield. Ah, draw up a chair, Captain. Yeah, thanks. Plug in the percolator, Rusty, will you? Some hot coffee will do us all good. It's plugged in and practically perking. Now, let me look at your arm. Hmm? Did he get you with that paper knife, Dan? Yes, but not where he intended to, Captain, fortunately. Oh, Dan, that's a nasty cut. I'll get the first aid kit. But I want to know, Captain, who pays for sewing up the rip in the sleeve of this suit? Oh, don't let him fool you, Captain. <laughs> that coat's been ready for the rag man for years. Good glamour, Mo. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were all through, Dan, when Morton brought up the motive. Up to that point, there just wasn't one. Well, I played a hunch that time, Captain. I have known men like Morton before. Under certain circumstances, they suddenly revert to childhood. It's the hysteria of frustration. Mm. He proved he was capable of a murder, didn't he? Yes. I thought for a moment he was going to make it, too. I was trying to keep away from him, figuring he'd confess. And he did. My, aren't you proud of you? Well, not especially. Well, I am. Isn't he wonderful, Captain? <laughs> Yes, and he's pretty, too. That'll do, <laughs> copper. <laughs> well, I gotta get back to headquarters. Thanks for a darn good job, Dan. Go so along, Rusty. Always a pleasure, Captain. Goodbye. Well, psychology student turns out to be big, strong man. <laughs> Gee, Dan, I was so scared, I'm still shaking. Well, why were you scared? Morton's after me. Uh, Dan. Hmm? I, uh, I think I have something in my eye. We'll, uh, put some cool water in it and don't rub it. Oh, Dan. Sometimes you make it very difficult for a girl to be a lady. 